Hi guys, so today I'll be reviewing the new Singer Stitch So Quick 2. Um, my most watched video of all time was a review I did on the Stinger, on the Singer, sorry, Stitch So Quick, and the original one, which wasn't made by Singer, there was another company that did something like this, it was like an infomercial type company, and so I reviewed this on how to use it on cards, like for card making, on felt, and I think one other video, but um, yeah, so it's the most viewed video I've ever made, but they do have a new one and it's very similar in that it only has a, basically a bobbin thread, one thread that does the stitch. Um, it kind of looks like a, it's not a chain stitch because basically it just goes through and back out. I don't know how to explain it. It's for temporary holds and for me for craft fixes. So um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But it does require four AA batteries that do not come in the package or a plug, which is kind of interesting because I just read this one also has that same information. You can also plug it in. I never even thought to look for a plug. So I'm gonna do is look through all my junk drawers because I know we have tons of AC, DC adapters that depending on the size of the little hole in here that might fit. But I already think it's gonna be a little bit awkward because you have to hold it back here and press this button for it to sew. So it looks like it's just stable. You just put it down, but we'll see. Maybe there's a function that um, just turns it on while it's sitting on the countertop. But let's look at it real quick. I did get this one at Walmart. It was $19.88. I think they're selling the stitch so quick for like 14, like 13.88 or something like that. To be honest, at my Walmart the other day when I went, they didn't have that. They had this one, but they didn't have the original, so maybe they're just replacing it with this guy. So as you open it up, it's well packaged. It has some um, threader. It comes with a black and a white bobbin. It has um, some extra needles. I think only one, and like a stitch ripper. And it always comes with a little piece of fabric to show you, hey, it was working. And it does have two bobbins of white, so that's nice. Um, one other thing is people ask a lot of times is how do you replace the bobbin? Like if you want to take this thread out and put the next one in, I'm sure there'll be instructions there. But to be honest, with my serger or machines like that, what I do is I'll remove this. I'll cut the thread back here, and then I'll put a knot in with a new thread. So tie it together, put the new thread on here, the new bobbin and let it go so the first part will suck in what you just added and that's just a real easy way to not have to mess with anything um, but it looks pretty simple so you're coming in here you go through this little loop to thread you go around I would always just pay attention to what it looks like but you go around this area here there's like a little hook and around and then just bring it straight down going through this guide up into the um, little latch that goes up and down. I forgot what the name of that is. Down in the front, from the front to back of this guide, front into the back here, and then down into the guide right above the needle and then into the needle. So it's not too complicated, only because other machines have a similar um, way of doing that. It has a different speeds. It has normal and speed, it says. So they have, I guess, two settings, normal and speed. It's really cute, it has a nice weight to it, so that's good. And your batteries go down in here. And I'm gonna see if I have a plug that fits here, but we'll try it both ways. Um, here's your on and off, and this kind of helps you maneuver up and down the um, needle here. So, that's something else. But, I'm um, gonna see what these other little holes are about. Usually you can put more thread here, so maybe this is just a way to wind the bobbin. I don't know, we'll have to check that out. It looks like you probably have to just buy bobbins that are ready to go. So let me grab some things um, and we'll try it out. Okay guys, well I tried to look for an uh, AC um, or adapter, but all the ones I had were either 12 volt, 4.2 volt, 13 volt output. And when I was looking at the manual, it tells you right here that you need a six volt um, outlet or output. Also, it tells you some other information. Like, let's say you have an adapter. You can order those like on Amazon and stuff like that you, where you can set the voltage, which is really cool and all those kind of things. So I do not have one. Well, actually, I do have one for my computer, but um, I don't think it'll work in this um, part here. It even tells you what size the adapter should be. But a lot of the times these things come with the little plugs. It comes with total, you know, all kinds of different ones. So if you wanted to run it that way, you could do that. So I'm just going to use the batteries. And as I was reading it, this thing actually has a lot of just the same as a sewing machine so if you're familiar with that um it's pretty basic you know uh, as far as different things this is the way you're gonna manage your tension right in here so uh i think you'd screw it down or unscrew it to make it tighter or looser for if your sewing looks a little bit wonky you know it might be too tight or too loose 
um, to thread the machine, which we kind of went over. Uh, but it has really good diagrams, really good, well-written um, instructions. Again, adjusting thread tension right there, winding the bobbin. So you can use the machine to wind your bobbin. And all you're going to do is put your empty bobbin with a basically a full bobbin is what they're showing, but you would probably want to get it off of a spool, right? Um, a full spool. And you're going to use this little guy oopsie, to help you um, hold your thread in place here while you're winding the bobbin. And it's just like any other basic machine. You just turn it on and it winds itself. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then it tells you how to replace the bottom bobbin. So when I was reading that, I thought, oh, I didn't even show you guys. There's a bottom bobbin. So this is a true lock stitch chain stitch machine, which is really cool. So you just open this up, even has pictures there just like any other machine to show you how to put the bobbin in. It's really easy. Whenever you pop a bobbin in, you just make sure that your thread is going in the right direction and you string it in here. You just kind of pull it into this area. So um, it's not difficult as far as that. And I'll probably do a separate video for that right now. We're just trying to see how it actually sews and what goes on with that because it will be a very long video otherwise. Um, so. Again, really well-written instructions, so I'm not worried about that. And then how to catch the bobbin thread, which once you replace the bobbin at the bottom, you have to be able to get that thread up and out. And usually you just advance the needle a couple times with this here. Just turn it, turn it, and it'll kind of go down in and it'll grab the bobbin thread. But um, that has some information there about that. And then changing the needle, easy as pie. Basically, you're just going to undo this um, screw here until it becomes loose, pull that out, pop in the new one. And a lot of times there's a direction, like there's gonna be a flat side and a round side to the needle. So I would pay attention to the way it came out so that way you put it back in. But again, it has information here about that. So really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna open this up, hopefully it works because if it does, this is great. Um, I have my four AA batteries and it looks like, yeah, so plus up, plus down. <laughs> Plus up, plus down. Yes, that's the um, technical term for it, plus. Anyway, just cover this back up. And it should be turned off, okay? So your machine should be off right now. And this is really tight. When I went to get it out, I was gonna break, break a nail. Has little rubber feet. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side for right now because I'm gonna sew on paper, which is what I like to do anyway, paper crafts. But I'm sure it'll be fine with fabric. Obviously there's like four thicknesses of fabric on there right now, but I'm just gonna stick this down like if I was making a card front. And this paper is only uh, four by five and a half. And then the mat is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. Just if you're wondering. So I'm gonna bring this over. Um, when you turn it on, I don't know if it's just gonna start moving or what, and this might be a hard angle for you guys to see. Um, but if I switch it up, there's gonna be too many things in the background to distract you. So let's just turn it on and see what happens. So I'm gonna turn this on and it's already going and this is already advancing. So I'm gonna turn it off right there. And you can sew off the fabric or off whatever it is that you're doing and I would recommend that and I'll talk about that in just a minute. So I'm gonna take this, there are no guides here. Um, you can always put like some tape to help you guide like there's a one quarter inch or half inch mar um, hem or margin or whatever you wanna call it. Um, but I'm going to line it up by the very edge of the presser foot. This is called a presser foot. And if you do need to lift it up to remove something, all you do is lift this handle here. As you're lifting it, and hopefully you can see the presser foot comes up and down, see? So I'm just going to lift it a little bit to get my paper in here. And I'm going to go ahead and lift up the presser foot, the needle, so I can get this in further. So I'm going to advance the needle. So if I go forward like this with my thumb, the needle will come up. And as it comes up, that gives me some area to put my paper in, okay? Because I couldn't get it into where I want it. So now I'm gonna lift the presser foot and put my needle down, put the presser foot back down and we will start. So um, it's ready to go. I'm gonna try to eyeball this as I go. So when I press this on, it's just gonna start going. So that's one thing you gotta be ready or it should. <laughs> just start going. It is not. Hold on. Let's try that again. Let me bring my needle. You know why? It's really tight. Let me bring this back just a little bit. And I'm just going to help it kind of advance. And when it gets to the corner, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it because I want to turn this corner. So I just stopped. 
I'm going to lift the presser foot only, the needle is still down, and I'm going to turn my paper to the direction I want. Uh, at first, the reason it didn't go is because the, um, the thread was too tight because of the way it was getting held between the paper and the needle and the getting pushed back here. So um, I understand that, that's fine. So now again, I'm going to start. Ooh, that's not good. Let's try it again. No, do I have a little jam or something going on? Let's see. Let's lift the foot. And it looks like the thread broke. So let me open this up. Let me open this guy up. These are all good things to happen so you guys can see. And my thread, my bobbin thread is already out. Let me cut, well, well, you can leave it for now. But as you can see on the back, it's being sewn and on the front. The front looks much nicer than the back. But let me trim this off here so we can keep working. Okay. So my thread broke somewhere, which is really weird because it's like tucked away. I can't even see it. Here it is. And let's see about this tension. There's that. There's that. It's a little bit too tight. I think, in my opinion. Now let me see which way it goes better here. If the upper tension is too tight, the upper thread lies straight along the surface of fabric. Correct by turning tension dial counterclockwise. So I've got to go this other way. See, I was already turning it tight. Okay, that's better. Now again, we're going to have to rethread this. So it went from front. I'm going to try to get a little bit closer. Sorry, guys, that was a quick <laughs> close up. Okay, it goes from the front of this loop to the back of this loop, if you guys remember. And then we're going to go over here to the needle. And there's a little loop here. There's a little... And you go from the top of that loop to the bottom. You can use the needle threader just to get in there, but I think I can catch this, hopefully. Maybe not. We'll see. And I'm too hard. Let me get the needle. This guy. We're going to use our little guy here. And I'm going to go up through that hole so I can then... Put the thread in there. Hopefully you guys can see this. Oopsie. All right. All you have to do is get the thread through that that large eye. Even as large as it is, it's giving me a little trouble. There we go. And pull it back through the hole. And with the smallest amount there. Okay, and now into the needle. And the needle eye is pretty big, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this thing since we're here already. So I'm gonna put that in the... Hopefully, kind of tight, there we go. Let me... Sorry, I hope that's not boring you guys, but that's how it is, you gotta troubleshoot sometimes. The bobbin thread is already out, so I don't know if that means I have to catch it again, but let me see what it says about that. Where you put that in there, pull it into the back of the machine. Yeah, so it's good. Since the bobbin thread's already out from before, it's fine. So I'm just gonna back up again, and we'll try this again. The press foot is up. I messed with the um, tension, as you guys saw there, so that's what it is. I'm gonna put the presser foot back down and turn the machine on again. Well, you know what, I'll bring down the foot myself. I'll bring down the foot manually just because. All right, let's try this again. Again, I'm gonna turn it off at the corner. Now we're going, we're off to the races. That's much better. Actually, this, the whole thing looks much better, so that's good. I guess you probably wanna adjust your tension and make sure everything's fine. And I'm not pushing it through, I'm just letting the machine do the work. I'm not, I mean, I'm guiding it, but I'm not trying to make it go through, okay? So I'm gonna pick up the foot, 
put this back over. Um, again, it has the different speeds. Right now I have it on normal, so I'm wondering what fast would be like. I guess we could try. Let's go ahead and engage that. Oh, that's much faster. <laughs> Wow, okay, so now I'm gonna take, I'm done, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. And it also says to go ahead and give it some tension to, to take away the tension so that your needle doesn't break. So right now I'm gonna pull this string from the top down. So when I lift up the presser foot, I can get my project out and not break my needle or bend my needle. So I'm pulling it a little bit. And I'm gonna put the presser foot back down just to keep my tension on the bobbin thread and cut that off. So this is really good, guys. I mean, obviously it's not perfectly straight, but that's also, I'm, you know, me. I was kind of looking at the camera and talking to you guys, but it's really good. So this is the first row here. And I don't know if you can tell, the top thread is just kind of flat. It's not really going in. And the bobbin thread, the bottom one, is kind of coming up a little bit into it. And that's always a sign that your tension's not quite right. It didn't start that way though. It started off a little bit better, but once I adjusted it, look how much better that is when I adjusted the tension. It's much cuter and it looks great. So this is really fun. Like I said, the um, instructions are real straightforward. If you have any familiarity with the machines, I think um, that will help you. If you don't, I think this is a great starter machine. I've reviewed the little Singer, um, the little kind of fun kids one, and that thing is a nightmare. And that one does only, I think, have one bobbin at the top. So it's just weird, it falls apart. It's impossible to work with. Like this for 20 bucks, I think is not a horrible price. Um, maybe you can find it for a little bit less, but adjust your tensions. I mean, you know, you can refill your bobbins. You can also buy bobbins like this already pre-filled for really cheap, like at um, a lot of places. So pretty cool. It came with this piece that is basically four thicknesses of like a muslin fabric. And it's looks like they did a pretty good job. I mean, we can try it out. Why not? We're already here. Let's try this one. I like to advance that myself just to get the foot in. Yeah, I mean, it does fine. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that gives you a little introduction to the Stitch So Easy 2. Um, I will put the link in for the first Stitch So Easy that I reviewed here. Um, this thing is really fun too. It's just like for me, it's not, you know, people ask a lot of questions like, can you make a whole costume with this or something like that? I doubt it. I really doubt it. So I think with this one you could because it is a true lock stitch, chain stitch. Awesome. Um, I do like that it has a couple settings and I would definitely, if you're going to use it for like a project like that, I would definitely get a little um, plug adapter for it. But like I said, I only had higher and much lower ones, so I don't want to burn the thing out. So make sure it's a six volt. Uh, DC and this one like I said I'll have the links to it it's basically the same very same but as you can see it's only the one bobbin there's no bobbin thread that comes out of the bottom it's just kind of it's kind of interesting I'm not sure it's it's a it's a different little machine if I recall it was have a bobbin at the bottom maybe it did all I know is that it feels like it goes in and it doesn't actually make a lock stitch so you can just pull it out real easy and even at the end of the instructions for this it tells you to be very careful not to pull the threads because it'll undo and at the very end tie your thread to from the bottom to the top in a way that uh, won't allow it to come apart so this has no such thing because it's a lock stitch and it's ready to go so pretty cool so thanks for watching guys. I hope to have other videos as soon as I come up on maybe having to redo the bobbin. I'll show you guys how to do that at a later date. But thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.